the emotional argument doesn't really take us anywhere because we get stuck in our positions, our moral positions on where life begins. But that doesn't help us to solve the basic conflict that there might be between women's rights on the one hand and some independent interest of the fetus, if that is being claimed. People have very different views. It's an ethical, religious, moral question and we're here to talk about legal restrictions on abortion. So what per people's personal views on where li life begins, I think has to stay in the personal arena. I will speak about abortion and the right to life and health in international human rights law and also touch a little bit on um, constitutional, comparative constitutional law and jurisprudence. States have human rights obligations. They have signed and ratified treaties in which they have, they have uh, committed to defending life, defending these other rights. And women's reproductive rights fall under that umbrella, which is a very important aspect. States have an obligation to defend our reproductive rights. No human rights body has ever found a permissive abortion law in violation of human rights or in violation of, of uh, the right to life. Uh, restrictive abortion laws lead to clandestine abortions which violate uh, women's rights to life, health, and other human rights, according to the Human Rights Committee and other UN bodies. It is discriminatory against women to deny services that only women need, such as abortion services, but also other reproductive uh, health services that only women need. And where abortion is legal, the state has an obligation to also make it accessible and remove the barriers. What is the right to life under human rights law? Well, it's the most fundamental of human rights. It comes across in virtually all human rights documents, um, all human rights treaties, and, and most national constitutions. However, what's important is to remember that these, this language of right to life uh, does not define where life begins. And it generally does not extend to prenatal life. The Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. So I'd like you to pay attention to the word born. This was very deliberately put into this text that the right to life and generally human rights protections in general, not just this provision, but, but uh, all the full range of human rights, uh, apply to persons who have been born. It's not that this provision could be broader and more rights embracing by also including the fetus. No, A extending the rights prenatally would automatically restrict the rights of the woman. On the Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, it's, the, it's the document or human rights instrument which is most widely ratified. It has been ratified by all countries in the world except for two. Um, United States and Somalia, in case you wonder. <laughs> Uh, in the preamble of this document, it says that the child needs special safeguards and care, including appropriate legal protection before as well as after birth. If you read this language, it sounds like it actually extends protection to, to prenatal life. But the history of negotiations show, um, of when, when, this, when this treaty was being negotiated, it shows that it's clear that this was not intended to preclude the possibility of abortion. Instead, the objective of this language in the preamble is to encourage states to provide nutrition, health, and support to the pregnant woman, which is a very different thing from protecting the fetus's interests independent from the woman. This is important to understand. Both the European Court and the European Commission, which is a predecessor, it doesn't exist anymore, uh, have come to the following conclusions when they've had to deal with issues related to abortion. That to grant the fetus human rights would place unreasonable limitations on the rights of women. The inseparability of the fetus and the pregnant women must be recognized. And in general, the rights of the woman will take precedence. Paul versus France from 2004. This is a very tragic case that involved a woman with a wanted pregnancy whose doctor accidentally caused her to miscarry. Uh, against her wishes, obviously. So she complained that the doctor could not be held accountable, could not be charged for manslaughter, because the fetus was not regarded a person under French law. So she went, she turned to the European Court of Human Rights and said, 
the fetus has to be recognized as a person so that this doctor that made me miscarry uh, can be held accountable for manslaughter and not just being you know, held accountable through some of the administrative procedure or medical malpractice. Well, the, court, the European Court of Human Rights again reiterated that the unborn child is not regarded as a person and cannot be regarded as a person under the European Convention on Human Rights. Human rights. And this is important because this case, in this case, there was not a conflict of interests between the fetus and the woman. So it's a slightly different case from, from, uh, from the other one that I mentioned. But even so, the court was very consistent and said, right to life starts at birth. Isn't there, however, a conflict here? Isn't there a legitimate state interest in protecting prenatal life? In 2007, the Slovak Constitutional Court was asked to, to review or consider if the Slovak abortion law uh, was consistent with this provision that human life is worthy of protection even prior to birth. The court found that the Constitution protects the value of, hu of unborn human life, but Importantly, the fetus is not a rights holder. So yes, the state needs to you know, offer protection to prenatal life to a certain degree, but very important constitutional principles include the reproductive self-determination of the woman. Women and child-friendly interventions are what work if we, if we actually genuinely care for not only you know, the life of the unborn, but also the life of, of, of children who are being born as well as the rights of women. Because when a fetus is in the woman's womb, I'm stating the obvious here, um, but it is intimately linked to the woman's body. And its interests cannot be separated from that of the woman. Because otherwise, thinking about it otherwise, would reflect the view that the woman is a mere vessel, uh, whose rights and interests would be of lesser value than that of the, of the fetus. It sounds logical, right? We restrict abortion, thus more babies will be born. But everyone who has looked at the numbers and looked at sci the scientific research on this knows that it isn't true. So I think it is a populist way of not having to deal with the real problems in, in demographic decline. For example, not having to, um, not having to establish support for families, maternal and paternal leave for, you know, so that, so that families can combine work with having children, subsidized childcare, etc., etc. There is a number of um, measures that can be taken if you really honestly care about changing your demographic decline. But those are expensive, those are controversial, those are complicated, so instead you go out and say, we're, we're not going to let women have abortions anymore. It's a populist argument.